Good afternoon. I'm George Latimer, Westchester County Executive. Welcome to our Grasslands Campus in Valhalla for Westchester County Government. We're here at our emergency services uh, facility, and uh, we appreciate that uh, Commissioner Richard Wishney and Deputy Commissioner Susan Spear uh, opened up their house for us. I'm joined here by uh, members of the executive branch and key members of the Westchester County Board of Legislators as we bring to a conclusion the 2023 budget process. Westchester County, as uh, the towns of Westchester and most of the cities of Westchester, operate a fiscal budget on a calendar year calendar. So January 1st, which begins our new year for all of us as uh, citizens, is also the beginning of a budget year, meaning that we have to make the decisions necessary to put a budget in place by that date. And I'm very pleased to say that on today, Monday, December 12th, we have uh, completed the work ahead of us, both on the executive branch side and on the legislative branch side. And in a few seconds, we're going to hear from uh, the chair of the Board of Legislators, the Honorable Catherine Borgia, and also from County Legislator Vidat Gashi, who chairs uh, the Committee on Budget and Appropriations. They are the individuals that uh, do the heavy lifting, along with their 15 colleagues, in, in reviewing the budget in all of its uh, complexity. We're joined as well by uh, members of our executive team and uh, commissioners from our various departments and some of the fine people that work for this county government. It's important to understand that those of us who serve in certain positions get much more attention than we deserve. Uh, it falls to me as county executive to sign the budget into law. But the process of this budget begins a lot earlier in the year when individual department leadership sits down and looks at the challenges that they have in each of a different number of areas. Leonard Towns, who is behind us here as the commissioner of the Department of Social Services, has the largest, uh, most complicated department to manage. But every department here has that responsibility. So Vincent Kapicki, who chairs, heads as commissioner of our Department of Environmental Facilities, who's with us here. We have with us as well Dr. Charlita Amler, who's our commissioner of health. Michael Orth, who's our Commissioner of Community Mental Health. We have Joseph Spano, who heads our Corrections Department. We have Rocco Posey, who heads our Probation Department. We have Evan Latanier, who uh, heads our Office for People with Disability. I've got to turn around and see who else I have here. Karen Hablo, our Finance Director. Larry Sewell, who has overall responsibility uh, within the budget preparation, but also heads uh, the Budget Department. And let's see, if I, who have I missed? Uh, we've got some deputy commissioners with us here. Terrence Rayner, who heads our Department of uh, Public Safety, and some of their key lieutenants are with us here, along with the aforementioned Commissioner Wishney. And they do the process of assessing what are the responsibilities that they have, what are the responsibilities that we are tasked to do by the state and federal government, what are the responsibilities that we have traditionally done to serve the people of Westchester? And then what do we need to do in the coming year, in the year of 2023? What will it take in terms of manpower? What will it take in the way of resources? What new programs do we have to initiate? What programs have we worked that, that no longer work the way we'd like for them and we have to transition away from them? And it is a process of professionals making these analyses. As it goes through the process, I lean very heavily on the senior management team of this county. I have been for many, many years a legislator myself, and so in this executive responsibility for these five years, I think much like a legislator does in a collegial fashion. And, and I'm joined by and completely rely on the professional skills of those people who are uh, right behind me here. Ken Jenkins, the deputy county executive. Joan McDonald, who's our director of operations. Emily Saltzman, who's the deputy director of operations. And as I mentioned, aforementioned, Larry Sewell, who's our budget director, and out here orchestrating the communications function for us, Catherine Chaffee, our director of communications. It is all of that effort and so many more talented people, men and women who are here in the audience, that, that in essence start the process that leads to this county budget, because then it is not just a document, it is a living, uh, functioning checklist of things that we have to do over the year to come to better serve the people of this county that we call home, to do the things that we swear to do when we're inaugurated, we raise our hand and we promise to follow the Constitution of the United States and our state and the laws of our county, and then and do those things that we know people need to have done. Then that responsibility, when we submit that, uh, uh, that budget to the Board of Legislators, for them to have an independent review and to assess different things and to make changes. And Chairwoman Borgia will mention some of the changes that they've made to the budget that was submitted. We submitted our capital budget for 2023 in October and our operating budget in November along with special district budgets. And the Board of Legislators through the Budget and Appropriations Committee, through public hearings, have gotten public input, input from advocates to try to assess 
uh, what changes are necessary and try to come to some uh, collegial agreement. I'm very proud to say this board passed the budget that I will be signing into effect unanimously, bipartisanly, technically tripartisanly, between representatives of different levels of governments and different political parties, different political philosophies. And it's not meant to think that everybody thinks in the same way. There's vigorous debate in, within the administration, when the administration approaches the public at large, and then when we uh, deal with the Board of Legislators. But we believe in democracy, and democracy encourages debate and discussion, but it also requires compromise and closure. And that's what we have today, a ceremony of compromise and closure that gives us something of substance that these men and women behind me can then go forth and, and implement as we go through this. A few highlights before I invite my legislative friends to say a few words. The 2023 budget begins on the basis of how we closed our 2022 budget, the budget that's going to be ending uh, just in a couple of weeks uh, at the end of, uh, of the December 31st period of time. We have closed the 2022 budget with an operating surplus of $65.9 million. That means that is money that we did not spend during the year, and now that can become part of the, uh, the financial savings account, the, the reserve account that will help us weather any future changes that may yet occur in the 2023 year. We were able to do both the 22 budget and the 23 budget without having to borrow money to pay for this budget. We did not borrow money or take money uh, from any other source to pay for our pension obligations. We did not borrow to pay for tax certiorari reimbursements that were required to do by law. And we did not use our fund balance, our savings account, to help balance this budget. It would be the same thing as if you have to tap into your savings account personally every month in order to pay your rent or your mortgage payment and your car payment, insurance payment, and the other things of life. When you can secure that savings account, you have a better financial footprint, and so does the County of Westchester when we're able to forego those things. This budget does not include any gimmicks. There's no one-shots. We're not selling something off to get a revenue to balance the budget this year, knowing that we won't have that asset a year from now to sell off to balance a future budget. And it's very important to understand we're not borrowing to make cash flow. We know that uh, tax revenue comes to us from sales and property and other transactions at set times of the year. If we run so close to the bone, we have to borrow money to make sure that we can meet the payroll until those revenues come in. This budget does not require that. And that's a very important uh, element of this. Our fund balance now is projected to be, by the end of the year, $448 million. And uh, I'm told that's a 19% uh, level. The bond rating agencies, the major Wall Street firms, Fitch's, Moody's, Standard & Poor's, analyzes every government for creditworthiness in the same way that you get a credit score from one of the major credit uh, firms. And the higher your credit score, the less it costs you to borrow money if you have to go out and take a loan for whatever purpose you might be using it for it personally. The same is true at the county. We go out and borrow to do major capital projects. The higher our credit score, the higher our rating is, the less expensive it is for us in interest payments to borrow that money, access that money, do the projects that we have ahead of ourselves. And we have now, over the last couple of years, stabilized the finances of this county. And we just received uh, from one of the bond rating agencies an upgrade from stable outlook to positive outlook. And, and at uh, near the top of the, uh, of the pyramid of rating agencies after we were downgraded a few years ago uh, for policies that existed to that extent going forward. We have in this budget an overall budget of $2.369 billion. And, and that number is up over last year, which is a $2.2 billion budget. But the additional $150 million that we're spending in this budget is in greater part because of the ARPA funding from the federal government, the American Rescue Plan Act money, which is revenue coming in from the federal government that we are then required uh, to spend in certain contracted ways. That number in this budget represents $68 million of that additional spending. And, and this management team wisely made the assessment of what we face in terms of inflationary times. And with a 5% inflationary projection, an additional 11 million, almost $12 million of spending is just to cover anticipated inflation in the budget. So those numbers together represent more than half of what uh, happens in terms of the spending uh, priorities that we have. And most importantly, the single question that we're asked, I know my friends in the legislature always ask this, what happens to my taxes? I wonder what happens to my taxes. Don't tell me about the services you have to provide. I want to know taxes. This budget, for the fourth consecutive year, 
cuts the county property tax levy. Not freezes it, cuts it for the fourth consecutive year. Six million dollars in this budget. What that means to the individual homeowner depends on what community you live in, because there's equalization rates that will determine how these things are spread about. Uh, there are a number of communities in this county that are not part of any special district, and, and the general fund is, the, is their complete obligation to the county. For those that fall in the refuse or sewer district, there are differing numbers that involve that in addition to the general fund. But the most important thing to understand is we now tax less property tax levy today than we did the day we walked into office five years ago. That is a statement of, of how professionals have been able to manage the budget. And, and I don't take the personal credit for this. That credit is shared by our professionals, by those who do the budgetary decisions in finance, those that manage day to day and figure out how to manage within a budget and save a little bit of the budget. It's the credit of the legislature that asks questions. Sometimes we don't always want to hear the answers, ask the questions or the answers. But it is a, it is a process of working through this that has gotten us to this position. Less tax money today required to balance this budget than four years ago when we came into office, five years ago when we first came into office. That is an, that is an important statement to make. I'm going to invite uh, our, uh, the chair of the Board of Legislators, Catherine Borgia, uh, to share some thoughts uh, about this moment. Uh, she has been a legislator in good standing for a number of years. She has served as a village trustee in the village of Ossining. She's been the town supervisor of the town of Ossining. She knows exactly how to balance a municipal budget on her own. She had served previously as the chair of the Budget and Appropriations Committee. So uh, she's been through this process uh, from, from all aspects and sides. And I want to specifically to talk about some of the initiatives that the Board of Legislators made to the budget that we submitted that helped improve the budget. The Honorable Catherine Borsha. Thank you. Uh, before I talk a little bit about the legislative process on the budget, I do want to w once again give credit to County Executive Latimer and his team. They sent us a good budget this time uh, and for the past four years. And one of the things I think that the County Executive maybe doesn't get enough credit for is understanding the financial condition of the county when he stepped onto the ninth floor and how he has done, he and his team have done a really masterful job in turning around the economic prosperity of Westchester County. We were in a situation that was not good, where we had to borrow for operating expenses, all the things that George is talking about, where we had a very, very, very thin margin. We could not withstand an emergency. But when the county executive came in, there was a lot of smart decisions that got made, and, and the county board was part, well, was part of that decision-making process, but it really is a testament to the talent of the county executive and his team that we are in the financial condition that we are now. And thank goodness, because we did have an emergency, a big emergency, that required all hands on deck. I see Dr. Hamler is with us. A, a situation that none of us thought we would be in. So uh, it's a good thing that we had such a competent team, and it really is a pleasure to work with the county executive and his team on these, on these matters. Um, at the, uh, as the county executive men, ma, uh, mess, mentioned, I uh, spent the past four years chairing the Budget and Appropriations Committee, and it is quite the arduous task, but it's also really a wonderful opportunity to see all of the services, all of the hard work that gets done by the people in this room and the other employees of Westchester County. So it really is a privilege to be able to be part of that process, to provide the oversight, to ask the questions, and then to do some of the things that are priorities for, um, our, for our board. I'm joined here not only by uh, b and Chair of Adagashi, but some of our other colleagues, uh, County Legislator Terry Clements, County Legislator Colin Smith are with us, some of our senior staff members are with us too. And it is an all hands on deck process for about five and a half pretty rough weeks. Um, at the end of this process though, we were very pleased to be able to make improvements to the good budget that we received by the county executive, working and negoti negotiating with the county execs team to um, reduce the parent share for child care, to help the child care um, facilities around our county, make sure that they can stay open to provide services for the children of our county. We were able to help bridge the digital divide by giving some money to Westchester Connects. Uh, we negotiated to reopen two mental health clinics. If even before the pandemic, we knew that we had a, cr a mental health crisis here in Westchester County. And I know that Michael Orth is 
is with us uh, here too and uh, talks to us a lot on the legislature about this and the ability to reopen two mental health clinics to provide more services we think is really going to be critical. Um, we, we also worked with our community-based organizations to help them uh, to increase the funding that we provide for them. We have good public-private partnerships with a lot of our organizations. Um, so it's a process that we feel very proud of as well on the legislative part. It's a pleasure to work with the county executive and his team. Even when we disagree, we can always find a nice way to come together. There's, there's negotiation. <laughs> there's negotiation. But it, it really worked out very well in the end. And I'm very proud of this budget. <coughs> and I think that the people of Westchester are well served by the work that we did. Um, and I guess now I'm ask uh, Legislative Dr. Gashi, Chair of Budget and Appropriations, to say a few words. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you to the county executive. Um, you know, the county executive will often say, and I, he mentioned again today, that he's a former legislator. Um, and uh, I can tell you as a person sitting in my first term as chair of budget and appropriations, how much of a great, how great an asset it is to me personally to have a county executive that knows what it is to be uh, in the legislature. And obviously the, the chairwoman who has just served as uh, chair of Budget and Appropriations. The budget, especially a budget of this size for a county like this, um, is a large and intimidating thing. Um, I can tell you that it can only be done uh, through the cooperation and good work of a lot of people. Um, I have to thank again the county executive for presenting us with a fair, balanced budget, one that frankly is remarkable in light of the difficult circumstances that we've had. Uh, again, it didn't happen all because of our particular genius. It was a lot of people pulling together, um, uh, including our, our federal partners and people throughout government. But uh, I thank again the county executive, uh, his team, the commissioners who sat with us <laughs> for weeks and questions on end um, as we reviewed it. Uh, and I think the end result is, again, something that we're proud of, a, a budget that adds money to uh, public safety, to corrections, to probation, uh, to mental health. Um, as the chairwoman uh, mentioned, uh, for child care, so that more families can benefit. Um, it, it's, it's something I'm tremendously proud of, and, uh, and uh, it's my first year as chair of budget and appropriations. Hopefully, they're all as good as this. <laughs> Thank you so much. Let me uh, recognize that today was a very special day for two members of the Board of Legislators uh, uh, that Catherine leads. Uh, today, Mary Jane Shimsky, who has served on the board for, uh, I think, 11 years, if I'm not mistaken, uh, may have said her final goodbye. You never know. There's always a reason to meet one more time. But um, she's completed that service, and she was elected to the New York State Assembly and uh, will not be with us in January. She'll be representing uh, Westchester, part of Westchester in Albany, and uh, she got a very good send-off from her colleagues in the legislature. I remember having that experience myself uh, a number of years ago, and so we're very happy and congratulate her on that. We also want to congratulate uh, freshman legislator James Nolan. His wife gave birth to a beautiful baby girl, I think within the last day or so, uh, nine pounds, and uh, it makes me uh, even more appreciative of uh, uh, <laughs> those, uh, those of this society that do bring life into the world and, and, and what uh, effort it takes. But uh, we're very happy for, for uh, the legislator's wife, and baby are doing fine, and to Mary Jane Shimsky as well. So congratulations to my colleagues. I want to recognize, and, and Ken Jenkins will catch if I've missed anybody else, we are also joined by the uh, Commissioner of our Parks, Recreation, and Conservation Department, Kathy O'Connor, is here. We have Hugh Grecian, who is the Commissioner of our Department of Public Works and Transportation. Uh, we have uh, the head of our uh, youth board, youth bureau, Dr. Damian Harris Madden is here, and also the head of our Human Rights Commission, Teja Sanchala, is here as well. I see Tom Kleiner out there, I think I see Tom Kleiner with the lights, uh, who heads up our workforce efforts. Ken, who else have I uh, neglected? Did I get, catch everybody? Bridget. Oh, Bridget Gibbons, our director of economic development is with us here as well. Bridget, thank you for your work, uh, and uh, if we have missed anybody else, you'll catch me uh, as we go through this. Uh, just before I sit down to sign this, I just want to highlight a few other things that I think are important to note. First of all, in, um, in, in the way this budget was constructed, 
we, uh, we, we took care to try to protect ourselves for things that might yet happen in the future. And in so doing, we have uh, 5,000 uh, uh, 5, positions in this budget that are funded. That number is actually 5,027 slots. We actually have 4,530 people employed by the county government as of today. Those additional slots have been set aside and budgeted, and this is a traditional task that happens every year in the budget. Uh, every year, the administration has a certain number of budgeted positions in excess of those number of people that are on board to allow departments the flexibility they may need to add additional staff. Because we operate within a world of civil service, it is not simply an arbitrary decision to add a position. It has to be reviewed by civil service, there has to be a vetting process of what list they're going to draw from, and at a moment's notice, one of these commissioners may tell Joan McDonald and Emily Saltzman, we need to bring on a person to do this or do that. It could be for any reason. Dr. Charlita Amler will write the book about what happened in COVID and how things had to happen like that. And, and to have these positions set aside for that purpose in the budget is there. If we don't spend the money, we don't spend the money, and it becomes part of our, our reserve fund that protects us a little bit further for the future. But so there's no misunderstanding. We have 4,500 uh, employees who work for the county now. When I was first a county legislator uh, a long time ago, we had well over 5,000 employees in the county, I think approaching almost 6,000 at that time. There were different departments of county government then, not quite the same configuration as there is now. <clears throat> but this number is a lower number than we've had, say, if you go back two or three years ago to 2019, uh, and, and we think it's a responsible number. And where those positions need to be filled now, the flexibility exists for those commissioners to make those recommendations. They've been vetted by the board, and, and we go forward in that regard. Um, let me also say that much of what we do um, is just to deal with the perceptions of are we funding the services of Westchester County effectively. Let me just give you some numbers based on the departments. And you have to know the relative responsibilities of each of these departments to understand how these numbers correlate. But of social services, $655.9 million. Now there's federal reimbursement for some of that expenditure, so it's not a full tax levy impact in that particular department. We budget $156.6 million for our correctional function. And, and of course, we run a facility that operates 24-7 in the county jail and ancillary services. And we have uh, the second largest workforce in any department in the corrections department, headed by Joe Spano. Our public safety department uh, is at the highest at 59.1 million. There's been a lot of discussion in the public about do you fund the police? This is the Department of County Police. 59.1 million is the highest amount that has been funded for this department in Westchester County's history. Probation is funded at 50.2 million. The health department at 218.7 million dollars. Mental health department, community mental health, 17.2 million. The parks department at 60.3 million. And it goes on down the line with other different activities and functions. We have put into this budget $6 million for economic development through a series of programs and services that include initial, uh, initiating a new program for downtown improvement grants, $1.4 million, and for the programs that we traditionally do in a host of areas, including tourism promotion. The various neighborhood health centers, the federally qualified health centers that, that provide uh, health services to the indigent in so many parts of our county is receiving a total of $3 million in this budget, a million dollars more than before. Mount Vernon Neighborhood Health Center, Open Door, uh, Sun River that serve communities like Greenberg and Mount Vernon and Peekskill and Ossining and Sleepy Hollow and Portchester, communities that are very uh, important and necessary. We have put money into the child care, and I want to compliment the Board of Legislators because this is something they prioritized over the years. Last year they added revenue for child care uh, programs and services, and this year we've cut the parent share down to 5% of the total cost. That is a savings for hard work working people. When mom has to go out and work and she has to have proper child care for her children, the cost of child care becomes an essential part of whether she can go to work and be a functioning part of the society, reducing that parent share and creating uh, the continued funding of scholarship programs for those who are uh, uh, at lower on the economic uh, level is important. When we first were in office, that parent share was 27 percent down to 5 percent. That is a productive investment in human beings and the human capital done through child care. And again, I compliment the board for their work on that regard. Uh, we've mentioned some of the programs in the mental health uh, uh, area. 
We, we have budgeted over $6 million for a mental health crisis response teams. This was a, a proposal that came out of the police reform discussion. It was universally agreed upon by those in the police services and those in the community that to have mental health professionals at the ready to respond to a certain type of incident alongside the police with the potential to de-escalate a certain kind of incident was an advantage for the police and for the community at large, and we've now implemented that program at $6 million in this budget. We have uh, $565,000 set aside for opioid response and overdose prevention initiative. We have $738 million set aside for, I mean, sorry, $1,000, $730. Uh, $0.8,000 set aside for early childhood mental health services. We have $2 million set aside in funding for Feeding Westchester to address the issues of food insecurity uh, in, in this area. We have $3.3 million in this budget for uh, emergency medical services um, mutual aid support. The Human Rights Commission receives an allocation of $1.3 million in this budget to do their work to deal with hatred and uh, uh, some of the problems in the society that, that we must address that, it, that we face. We have a million dollars in this budget to help ensure maternal mortality uh, care and outreach for those that are indigent that, that face these issues. So it's a wide range of things that we're responsible to do. The Youth Bureau with uh, their grant programs and other activities, $4.7 million in all of this. And then separately, but part of this budget, the capital project where we invest money in improving our physical infrastructure. You have seen over the last number of years how we have wisely spent our capital money. You've seen the improvement in Memorial Field in Mount Vernon. You've seen the creation of a new, appropriate, New Rochelle family court. You've seen that empty pools at Sprain Ridge uh, pool complex have now been uh, renovated and been open for the last four years. The collapsing Washington headquarters Miller House renovated and reopened three years ago. The North County Trailway, the South County Trailway, Playland Amusement Park, completing the connection of the pathway on the Bronx River. All of those capital projects and more, the things that you can't see, the work that has to be done inside our sewer uh, wastewater treatment plants in order to keep them uh, prepared to, uh, uh, to function and give us the, the basic public health and, and sanitation that we need. On and on and on again. The roads that we've been able to repave, we haven't done enough of them. We have to do more. There's money for more of them in this budget, but we've done projects hither and yon. Mamaronic Avenue from the south end of White Plains into the village of Mamaronic through Harrison, repaved through uh, contractual efforts. Hugh Grecian lost a little bit of hair over that project, but the project is completed, and we'll give him another project that will help him uh, be, be uh, equally uh, frustrated as we go through this. In this budget, we allocate money for the Playland Ice Casino for its rent needed renovations. Hilltop Hanover Farm and Environmental Center in Yorktown. Money is in this budget for a major project in Cranberry Lake Preserve in North White Plains in the town of North Castle. Kathy O'Connor applauded when we said that bit of good news. And, and we are looking at all of those things that represent the assets of Westchester County. I've heard it once said, that there are people who understand the cost of everything, but the value of nothing. We understand the value of these things. I was born in this county 69 years ago. I benefited from services that I didn't even realize were provided by the county government when I went to Wilson Woods Pool as a child, or when I drove uh, on the Bronx River Parkway to go to the county center for an event at the county center. But those those assets have existed for years in this county, and this administration has made the decision with this board of legislators to make sure that those assets continue to be an asset for the years to come, that they are assets well beyond the life of this administration so that we respect what those who, what before us accomplished, and we can keep them in a fresh, uh, reasonable way. With that, uh, I'm going to uh, sign this budget uh, into law. I appreciate the fact that the Board of Legislators has done their diligence. They will continue to do their diligence. The, board, uh, the Committee of Budget and Appropriations does not close up shop. They now start calling in commissioners, so guys, don't be too comfortable. You're going to be called back in to ask about how this is going, how that is going, and that is, that is the proper uh, method. And uh, we look forward to having a, a successful year ahead of us as uh, this administration approaches the beginning of our sixth year in office. Uh, before I sign this, let me personally thank, once again, this executive team. Uh, there isn't a day that goes by that I, that, that I fail to tell them how much I appreciate them individually and collectively. And every time I'm in the community and I have a chance to talk and somebody says, oh, you're doing a great job, I know the work that Emily Saltzman has done. I know what she's done. 
what she and her team have done to provide um, almost overnight uh, the ability to vaccinate people during COVID, working closely with Dr. Shirley Amler. And, and I know the work that Joan McDonald has done in sitting at the top of the operational pyramid, the difficult issues that I sit with Ken Jenkins and I say, Ken, can you handle this one? And he handles it brilliantly. And when I turn to Larry Sewell, can we afford this Larry? And he smiles at me and he tells me the truth. He doesn't tell me what I want to hear, he tells me the truth. So that when we do these things, we can afford them. Um, I, I, uh, no one sits in higher appreciation of these executives and the rest of these commissioners than I do. I realize every single day how much this county runs on the talent and the ability of these people who are here. I only wish all of you in the, in the community at large, the one million people, which I wish you could know what I know about how talented these people are. We're lucky to have them and I'm appreciative of them every single day. Yes, we're going to ask uh, legislators, is this microphone on also? We're going to ask legislators uh, who are in the room to please join us up here. Uh, Colin Smith from Peekskill, Terry Clemens from New Rochelle is with us here. And uh, I have a couple of these pens to give out. I remember when I was a little kid, I watched Lyndon Johnson doing this. I never thought I, the day would come where I would get to do it too. Sign something and hand somebody a pen. <laughs> Uh, we have here a report from the Committee on Budget and Appropriations. This is Act Number 161 of 2022, um, and I'm not about to read all of this stuff. They've read it. I assume you've read it. <laughs> <coughs> and uh, this has been adopted by the Board of Legislators by votes of 17 votes in favor, no votes against, on the 12th day of December. And it's been certified by Sunday Vandenberg, who's the clerk of the County Board of Legislators. And so now approved on this day, the 12th day of the month of um, December of 2022, by the uh, power given to me by the people of Westchester County. It's only three more years, don't worry about it, it's not forever. <laughs> I, have the, I have the privilege to sign this into law as the uh, official budget for Westchester County for the year 2023. And I'd like to um, congratulate Chair Catherine Borgia Catherine, where are you? you? The head of the Budget and Appropriations Committee, Vedat Gashi. Uh, Richard Wishney, my friend who headed the Budget and Appropriations Committee when I was a legislator. Now he heads this department. Commissioner, please accept this pen from a grateful Thanks. county on behalf of your fellow commissioners. Um, and uh, we have a pen for um, my good friend Joan McDonald for all of her outstanding work putting this all together. Yes. Joan, thank you. Thank you. My friends, uh, we have a budget for 2024. Yeah. I think uh, whatever press is in the room, if they have any questions on the budget, we're happy to do stand-up interviews off to the side. Myself, I'm sure uh, any of the other executives, the chair and any commissioners would be happy to answer any questions any members of the press have. Um, let me extend to everybody uh, a very Merry Christmas season that's ahead. Uh, Hanukkah begins on the weekend, so happy Hanukkah. We also want to extend uh, uh, upcoming after the Christmas uh, celebrations over joyous Kwanzaa. A happy new year to follow, and as I'm fond of saying, for those of you who follow Seinfeld, Festivus for the rest of us. <laughs> Have a good evening. Thank you.